Maybe that's a good thing <laughs> that it's not legal. I don't know. I don't like it. I would rather it be legal. But we have people in this state that will shoot you for lane filtering up to the front. They will not only swerve over and hit you with their car, they'll get out and shoot you. You know what I mean?
you have people that are going to be doing a hundred and something mile an hour, you know, they're going to be going mock Jesus. And, well, they're going to come up between two semis. I know because I drive a truck and I've watched people doing mock Jesus fly up between me and another truck on a motorcycle and you will are if you mess that up and you got wind coming from two different directions trying to pull you under um, before my foot can even apply the brakes you're already crushed and you're not even under the trailer no more you're what's left of you is like a human crayon so please don't do that You know, so I can, I can understand the lane splitting part, like with the speed limit thing. And I kind of think some of these states are doing it right when they legalize it, you know, under a certain speed limit. You know, you're doing 20 miles an hour filtering through traffic so your bike's not overheating. I don't mind that. I would love for that to be legal here. You know at a red light filtering up to the front that brings everybody up that means you can get through that next light without it becoming red that's what that means because I'm gonna take off faster than you I'm gonna be in front and yes I get to go and yes you think I'm cutting in front of you but those people behind you have all moved up a vehicle length a few of them got through the light if it's all backed up Maybe the light didn't back up because, you know, there's less vehicles in the way. That's what it does. It eases congestion. Filtering up at a stoplight, like right here, eases congestion. That's all it does. <laughs> but like I said earlier, we have people in this state that will shoot you for doing that. Fortunately, I shoot back doesn't do any good when your hands are on the handlebars and you don't see them coming you know or they hit you with their car and knock you down and you're trying to get back up and they got the surprise on you <clears throat> but yeah as of this month it's illegal so that's kind of messed up so yeah 34 miles I can drive. I'm not gonna run it that way. Crosby, Texas. A few places I like here. for enough, right? I don't know. I don't want to run it out. I'll see how bad it looks when I get up here to a normal place that I stop at. I want to stop back there at that uh, racetrack, but there's too many weird people that keep approaching me there. So I don't want to stop there. Anyways, the world's full of assholes. And everyone is, to a degree. A joke about it. it's just a question of what kind of asshole are you. It says 33 miles. Hopefully that's accurate.
<sighs> red light, green light, who knew I'd play that for a living. I drive a truck. <laughs> so I drive for a living, so it's red light, green light. Stop, go, stop, go. All that good stuff. understand why over a certain speed so most people you know it's like lane filtering lane splitting same thing kind of well, you know have a speed limit you know 20 miles an hour maybe I don't know something where you know you keep the bike moving good even if you're not real experienced I think 20 is more than good enough for that. That's, you know, about where the steering kind of changes. Give them that. This is a 
bike that I wrecked like what two years ago. And you don't have any protection. You hit something, especially head on, you're not having a good day. Especially when you hit an object that's not moving like a tree. And from my experience, please don't do that. I had to kind of learn to walk again. They nearly took my leg. The peg that was down there ripped right through it like spam. Then I was on a walker, then I was on crutches, then I was on a cane. I had to relearn how to drive my car, my truck at work. Then about the time the motorcycle was ready, I was ready to hop back on it. So, yeah, try not to hit anything. wearing a whole bunch of protective gear but it's generally hot as hell down here and the gear is expensive and that's like a personal risk sort of thing where I say wear as much protective gear as you can at a minimum wear a helmet wear gloves wear boots at least if you drop it in an intersection you're not gonna die hitting your head you know had a low speed crash, which happened with my cousin. Technically my cousin's cousin, but you know, we grew up together. Hit his head on a curve. At an intersection. If I wasn't wearing a full face helmet, if you can wear one, please do. If not, I understand that's your choice. I wouldn't force anyone to do anything. That's freedom, you know. I would highly suggest doing it. Don't necessarily do as I do. But if you don't, that is your choice. That is solely your choice. But I can tell you right now, if I fell off this bike for some reason, I'd be a human crayon right now. That's the second time I've said that in this video. You get my point. The concrete, asphalt, even gravel, I slid down the road on gravel. Uh, it's unforgiving to the human body. So like I said, if you can wear it, please do. probably gonna get one of them um, hoodies with padding in them which or something like that but that doesn't really provide slide protection that's just like padding if you hit there's not much slide protection in the ones I've looked at and I would definitely want something if not that if I got a regular jacket once it gets colder, I have a leather, leather jacket, a big, heavy leather jacket that I do wear. You can see in some of my videos, that's the one I was wearing when I went to see my sister. That thing's heavy. That provides slide protection. It doesn't provide any fall protection, but it provides really good slide protection. And gloves, even at a you know, low speed thing. You're gonna try to catch yourself, palm your hands, and say, please wear gloves. And hopefully don't have your fingers ground off at a higher speed thing. And boots, you know, it, not, if you wanna wear tennis shoes or flip flops, they got riding shoes now. That's great. Try to get some shoes that are made for riding. Something that's not going to get ate through. But your sneaker's going to get ate through real quick. I know you got the Goldwing Rider and that sort of thing. That um, Am I sputtering? I don't think so. It says 14 miles and I gotta go like two more miles to where I want to fuel. So we're gonna find out how accurate this fuel gauge is. I am technically on reserve even though I don't have a switch. But yeah, the asphalt will eat through, the concrete will 
a problem. Your shoe is nothing. Shoes are nothing. Get some leather on your feet or a good riding shoe. But if you want to wear sandals, that is your choice. You have the freedom to do that. And that makes this country great. So, like I said, it's a personal choice then. Should you? Oh yeah. Should you wear a helmet? Definitely. I think you should wear a helmet. Am I going to tell you that you have to wear a helmet? No. That's your choice. You assess that risk. If you think it's worth it, you're going to risk, you know, injuring your brain. Dying from something you shouldn't have. That's your choice. Have fun. I don't even think we need a law to say that. We shouldn't even need a law to say that you need eye protection. Because, I mean, which is basically all we have here in Texas if you're over 21. I think is you need eye protection. I don't know if it says anything about gloves or not. But it does say eye protection, I'm pretty sure. But I don't think you're going to ride a motorcycle very far without eye protection if you do. It's not going to take you long to find some shades or something to put on. Because no one wants to sandblast their eyes. That's pretty... I don't know if visceral is the right word, but... It, it wouldn't take very long of riding before you decide this is not a good idea. You know? Imagine that grasshopper that hit me in the shin, or kind of knee shin area earlier. Imagine if that thing hit you in the eyeball at like 75, 80 miles an hour. You're not going to have a good day. But it's very, very rare you ever see anyone without at least glasses on. Some kind of sunglasses, safety glasses, something covering their eyes. And that's why you have an immediate response telling you this is not good. On the other stuff, there's not really an immediate response. There's an, okay, if this happens, and odds are I'll be fine. But if it happens, you're going to be hurt. You know? But it's your choice. And just like lane filtering, splitting, what have you, you don't have to do it. Some people got bigger bikes. They can't really fit up through there. This bike, um, if that became legal in Texas, I'd probably move the license plate. I'd get one of them things to go on the rear. You know, rear mount it instead of that thing Harley decided to stick out the end to beat your shin with when you walk by in the garage. Which is what this still has on it. Gotta watch the gravel. As you notice, it's all construction and trucks pull out there. Like I said, you gotta watch the gravel. Where do I want to go? I think here would be really good. There we go. I made it. Hooray, I made it. I did not run out of fuel. It's giving me a warning. Low, low, low. Okay. Apparently, E does not stand for enough. It stands for empty. Who knew? But I'll catch y'all later. Let me know your thoughts on lane splitting, lane filtering, that sort of thing. And Texas deciding to specifically make it illegal this year. 
and I'll catch y'all later. Adios. Deuces. Ciao. All that good shit. Bye-bye.